Guys, sports, it's your boy, Mike. I wanted to try something different here, which I normally am in front of my camera, my Canon camera, where I'm talking about sports. I'm like, you know what? Let me try this. I've kind of seen it on YouTube a lot where people are just talking to like their Zoom camera. I'm going to get a better camera for my Zoom. Right now we have this. There's a lot to talk about in the NBA, and I have to chat about it. The Raptors just made an announcement having a new coach, which I'm going to talk about in my next video that will come out tomorrow. Today, I want to focus on game four of the NBA Finals. Now coming to game five, which will be tonight or Monday, whatever day you are watching this, it will be that day. If you're watching after, then you already know the result, especially if Denver wins. You already know they are hanging the banner. But I want to talk about that. I want to talk about Dame Lillard. I want to talk about Chris Paul. I want to talk about their futures. But shout out to the Raptors. They got his name is Darko. His last name, I don't even want to butcher yet. I know his first name is Darko. So shout out to the Raptors for getting Darko as a new head coach. They say that he is a he he likes, you know, to pass the ball a lot. He needs a team that he doesn't care about turnovers. This is an interview. He's like, I don't care about turnovers. We get five, ten. The top teams don't care about turnovers. Look at the San Antonio Spurs. He says it. Watch the video. He says. Look at the turnovers the San Antonio Spurs had. He's okay with having a lot of turnovers. He just wants an offense that is kind of like the Denver Nuggets right behind me. Kind of like the way Miami would play without Jimmy Butler. Kind of like the way the Memphis Grizzlies, where he comes from, played without Ja. That offense that everyone touches the ball, everyone can play point, everyone, he all these weird passes, he likes that. So I'm looking forward to see it. As a Raptor fan, as a Toronto Raptors fan, you're just going to be happy to see what you see. You're going to be excited at the fact that the Raptors finally made a decision. We don't know what decision this team is going to make. You don't know. Draft day is, is about a week and a half away. We have no idea the decisions that this Raptor organization is going to make. They took so long to get this coach, which is good. It shows that this team was really want to think about their next couple years, next five years. But that's it for the ride. I don't want to talk too much Raptors. I will talk too much about it on my next video. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't want to let's hit that like button. Make sure you comment. The 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 family's growing. Let's keep growing. Let's talk about the game four of Denver Nuggets and Miami Heat. I thought Miami was gonna win. I predicted, I think Denver in like I said Denver in I think Denver in seven, I think Miami in six. So I'm like, I picked something around those lines. And, you know, <laughs> Denver is, is an amazing team. I've said it before, the Denver Nuggets are making you think about not the bubble title, not the Lakers bubble title. That, like, Giannis title the year after, you're, it's kind of making you think about it. Because all in all, in the bubble, Jamal Murray went crazy. The Denver Nuggets went crazy. They were down 3-1 against the Clippers and won that series. And they faced the Lakers and, of course, lost. But they faced a younger LeBron and Anthony Davis, who was hungry, and a way better supporting cast than the Lakers had it then. But you're thinking this team, this Denver Nuggets team, is the team of the future. There was years ago, years ago, there was an article made on ESPN saying the Denver Nuggets were the team of the future, the next Golden State Warriors, as some would say. And you can see it. They had the young talent. They had the young superstar in a Jokic. They had a Jamal Murray who was, you know, he's a better playmaker than a Klay Thompson, but a great number two to a Jokic who was compared to a Steph Curry and had a bunch of young guys. And, of course, they had the vet at the time was Iguodala who happened to just be with the Warriors at the time, but now he's not. But with this team, who do they have? They have a KCP. They have a Michael Porter Jr. who I believe was going to have a breakout year. He did not have a breakout year, but I believed in a Michael Porter Jr.'s talent. So when I see that, I'm like, man, this Denver Nuggets team is good. I predict them to be number one. Did I predict them to go to the finals? No, no, no. You can shoot me on that. I did not predict them to go to the finals, but I did think the Denver Nuggets team was a good team. I, I just think Nikola Jokic, he could have won MVP this year. They gave it to Embiid, and a lot of people can say they gave it to Embiid so Embiid wouldn't cry about it. Embiid wouldn't complain about it. The Philadelphia 76ers fans, their reporters wouldn't be like, oh, this guy's the MVP. He should deserve it. Years back, blah, blah. No, they didn't want to hear any more noise. So they gave it to Joel Embiid. When, quite frankly, Jokic was having a better year than he had the past few years. 
And then what's even crazier with this Denver Nuggets team is that for the final like month of the season, they stopped trying. When Jokic was number one in the straw poll of getting the MVP, he stopped trying. The whole team stopped. Michael Malone called out his team multiple times. Multiple times. He said, these guys aren't trying. They're not caring. There's no effort. All these things. Just called out his team completely. They hit a switch. When it came playoff time, they came back to that regular season. They're still first. Even after having a month of slacking, they're still first because their starting unit is Really good. Aaron Gordon has 27 points in game four. A guy who was like a second or first option with the Orlando Magic, he had 27 points and played great defense on a Jimmy Butler. You have guys coming off the bench. That fourth quarter, the last five minutes, I don't know what happened to Bruce Brown, but he became like Jamal Murray. He became the star in the fourth quarter. And that's like, hey, man, this Denver Nuggets team is good. When you have a Braun, I, I think, well, I think his name is, his last name is Brown. I think he's cleared his name as being Brown. Two Browns on the team, you know, Brown Jr. and Brown White guy, you know, whatever. The team is a good team. Michael Porter Jr., like I said, that guy has, talent-wise, if we talk about just pure athletic talent, the guy's the most talented guy on the team. He really is. If you go pure, like, athletic talent, if you didn't know any of their games, you watch all of them play. If you're redrafting, you don't even know anything about Nikola Jokic. If you see this 6'9", 6'10", shooter who can shoot like Klay Thompson, you're thinking, okay, he has all the length. Maybe teach him a little defense. you probably pick him. He's like the youngest guy on the team. Well, the youngest starter and then the youngest guy that you believe can that you can build with in the future is Michael Porter Jr. But his team is so good. Jokic is only like 27, 28. Jamal Murray, around the same age. Uh, Aaron Gordon is like the oldest one on the team at like a 27, 28. Like everyone's in their peak age. Because when you look at all the people who've won titles, all the people who've won their first title, it's around this age. It's that 27, 28 age that everyone, LeBron, Mike, all of them, Steph, all win within that age range of that, that 25, 26, 27, 28. Within that age range, everyone wins a title. I just think this is Denver's year. Unless we see a shock. Now, the question a lot of fans of Miami Heat, fans of the NBA can ask themselves is, how is Miami going to win this series? Well, I don't know. I'm not too sure how they're going to win this series. Denver, offensively, is just better. And this is what it comes down to. Offensively, Denver is better. People are talking about Jimmy Butler being hurt, and he is hurt. Like, he's hurt. But even though he's hurt, he still gave you 20-plus points, uh, I think give you 10 plus rebounds. Bam is giving you 20 and 10 the past couple of games. So those two guys are actually showing up. So it's really not them. But what's happened? Where's Caleb Martin? The guy that literally beat the Boston Celtics, went 12 for 16 in game seven against the Celtics in the TD Garden. Where's that guy? Well, he's nowhere to be found. Gabe Vincent, he hasn't really done much. The, the best players for this team, the Miami Heat, has been those two guys, Bam and Jimmy Butler, and then the guy in Kyle Lowry, the 36, 37 year old in Kyle Lowry, who doesn't play really the first, he plays like the little bit of the end of the first quarter, a little bit of the second, doesn't really play the third until the right the last two minutes, and then plays all of the fourth. Eric Spolstra has leaned on his veteran leadership in a Kyle Lowry, in a Jimmy, and in a bat. And they're kind of just trying to see who else is going to do it. Is it going to be a Caleb Martin? Is it going to be a Duncan Robinson? Can we get a good Max uh, Strauss game? What, where has he been? The three-point shooting for the Miami Heat has failed them, quite frankly. That's what's the problem. The Miami Heat have failed to hit their threes the same way they were hitting with against Boston, against New York, and against you know the Milwaukee Bucks. Yes, Jimmy Butler is not as intense as he was against when he was facing Milwaukee. And he was not really the guy that he was against New York, but clearly that ankle was causing him a problem. But the other guy stepped up, and now they haven't stepped up. If I'm Eric Spolstra, and I'm not, not close to as smart as Eric Spolstra, especially when it comes down to it, when it comes down to what you need to crunch time, I'm thinking, hmm, do I got to start Kyle Lowry? And I get it. Kyle's not looking to score. And I think this Miami Heat team needs someone who's looking to score. And you don't want to put Kyle on Gabe Vincent because that's too small. Like maybe you got to try something different. 
Maybe you got to go a Kyle, Gabe at the two. Then you got to go Jimmy at the three, Caleb Martin at the four, Bam at the five. That's probably your best offensive team, best defensive team. So if offensive defense best on both ends, and the team I think is just going to give you the best bang for your buck. For, and that's what you need. You're going to need that. If you're the Miami Heat, the ways that you can win, you got to hit your threes. That's one. Got to hit your threes. You know, Strauss has hit his threes. Duncan Ross has hit his threes. And uh, Gabe Vince has They have to hit their open threes. Not just hit their threes. They have to hit their open threes. I like what Kevin Love is doing. I feel like he's, he's trying. He really is. But at the end of the day, He's losing guys on, on, on the back cuts so much. Uh, defensively, he's, of course, he's a liability. He's never been a great defender. You know, unless he's going to guard Jokic and just you want to use the physicality, he should probably come off the bench. He really should. Maybe a guy off the bench who can hit threes, uh, play active defense, and then like a team-oriented defense because not everyone can be one-on-one defenders. He can play an active defense. Maybe that's what you need uh, out of uh, a Kevin Love because – what we're seeing here right now is not working. It's not working overall. The Miami Heat, you know, being down 3-1 against the Denver Nuggets. I think a lot of people say there's no hope. And I can kind of agree. What, where is the hope? What, what are we going to see different from the Miami Heat that's going to help them win games? What helped them in game two is that they were hitting a bunch of their shots. They were playing great defense. They were playing like the hungrier team. Now, one thing I was listening to uh, – the Bill Simmons podcast, which I have a, I'm like, a, for some reason, guilty pleasure of listening to Bill Simmons podcast. Uh, I do think him and Ryan Russell are smart. Some of them think they're completely wrong about some of the things. I would love for them to have me on and I can talk ball with, uh, with Bill. I think me and him would disagree a lot, which makes for good entertainment. So why not? Um, but what I'm trying to say is, you know, listening to their podcast, they had mentioned something about, and it was actually Bill Simmons and it was, um, I forgot the two uh, other uh, David Jacoby and and Kevin Wild. So he had those three uh, two guys on, and he's talking to them about something is wrong. And this is just has happened the whole playoffs where the home team seems to have the disadvantage. Denver won both their games, uh, well the two games in Miami. Miami didn't win no game at home. Miami's actually I think lost six games in a row at home. They beat Boston in the game seven in Boston's house. Denver beat LA twice in LA. So it's just like, it doesn't seem like home field advantage has really become the advantage for a lot of these teams. Boston won all their games in Miami. Well, I think they won one game in, in Boston, but the two games out of the three that they won against Miami was in Miami. So it's just like these guys are, it's like the, the home field isn't there. There's multiple reasons why that we can name like 20 reasons why, you know, the, home field advantage should be in your favor. But I think the reason why it's not is because a lot of these teams are pretty evened out. Your home field advantage is not doesn't feel that home field anymore. When some of these guys are getting multiple of their family members there in, in attendance. So they're still cheering them on. So they have a little bit of a cheerleaders with them, even if they're away. And you have your bench who are cheering you on more than ever. They're becoming louder. And what's something I think was Wilds that said or Jacoby? When the crowd is quiet, it, it honestly is such a benefit for the away team because you just don't need them to start chirping and start talking. What fans should do is that even when you're down, yell defense, cheer your team on, give them the energy. Because when you give them the energy, they're going to play better. But the moment the other team is just, you know, shooting the lights out and then it has you quiet and you're not saying nothing, you're giving them the advantage. So I think that's happening a lot, especially if, even if teams are down like five or 10. And mind you, in this league now, you can shoot threes. And when you shoot threes, that lead of 20 means nothing. It means like you, you can do whatever you want because you have the ability to shoot the three at the rate that you have to shoot the three. And with Rami Heat, they can shoot the three at the level that most teams cannot compete with at all. So all in all, right now, the Denver Nuggets are up 3-1. Do I think they're going to win the last game? I believe that in Denver, the altitude is a thing. I think Miami has tried their hardest, and I, and I can believe in Miami all I want, but the Denver Nuggets are just a better team. I think they're going to win on Monday. I think the NBA Finals will be complete on Monday because the Denver Nuggets are a much better team. Now, we've counted out Miami a lot of times, 
And of course, I'm going to be another person to count the Miami Heat out. And I don't want to count the Miami Heat out completely. I really don't. But it just seems like this is the inevitable. It's what's going to happen. Uh, so as much as they want to try not to make it happen, it looks like it's probably going to happen. So I'm giving it to Denver. The only how Miami can win is if Jimmy Butler plays completely insane and goes for like a triple-double, which is the same thing LeBron had to do in game four, and no one joined him. So I don't know. It's one of those things that it's almost inevitable. The Denver Nuggets are just and have been the best team all season. Of course, we want to talk about Milwaukee and Boston and all that stuff, but the way the Denver Nuggets have, are playing, the confidence they're, they're playing with, I'm not sure if there's any team that can compete with that. When you have that confidence. Like Miami had the confidence to hold Boston series. That's why they won. I don't know they, they they won Game Seven because they believe in themselves. You could say Jason Tatum was hurt, but I think Boston or Boston was going to lose to Miami because the belief that the Miami Heat had the whole time. But I would say I think the Denver Nuggets are going to win. Congratulations to them. I'll, I'll make another video. Uh, especially I'm going to put it on TikTok. Another video of you know Nicole Jokic, Jamal Murray. Shout outs to Kitchener, Kitchener Ontario. Shout outs to them. They're probably going to have like. A parade for this guy and uh he deserves it this team deserves it so game five is about to happen hopefully you know it's a good game i like close games i prefer miami win because i like i like to go to a game seven i'm not gonna lie let's go to a game seven if we can the basketball gods can you know please us fans with a game seven that'd be even better so i'd love to see that well let's move on let's talk about a guy who's joined multiple podcasts recently multiple like lives all he's always on live now he's always talking which is a guy i wouldn't say he doesn't talk but we're hearing him more now than i feel like we've ever really heard him before and that's dame lillard. and i must let's, let's dive straight into it with dame lillard he's been very loyal to portland and i think a lot of fans you know are thankful to that because you know we want you to be loyal to the, the squad uh we people are always complaining about something we would rather you be loyal than ask for a trade. So thank you for being loyal, Dane. Um, I think it's time. I think most people can say, I think probably people in Portland can say it's time. It's time that we move on. We appreciate all the hard work you put in, but it's time to move on. Dame said, you know, if he had to go to any team, speaking of the Miami Heat, he said he would go to Miami. Now, a lot of people go to Miami. The taxes are, are cheaper, um, nicer weather. That's what people want to go to. They want to go to a place that has amazing weather and has an amazing feel. And that's Miami Heat. They have an amazing feel. They have heat culture that people just love talking about. Um, so I wouldn't even want to go there. It's a pretty good place. Now, in saying all that, he's not going to Miami. Miami cannot give them enough to get Damian Lillard. They can't. Unless you're telling me I'm getting bad, you can't give me enough. There's nothing. Imagine if I was Portland, I would want Bam so I can flip him to another team. I wouldn't want to keep Bam. I want to flip him. I want to tank. I want draft picks. And and I imagine I'm not the biggest tanker, but if I can get some draft picks, I have, you know, a, a top draft pick this year. And I still got a Shaden Sharp who I believe can be a star. I, I want to tank and build through those two guys and hopefully some other uh, pieces. And Bam is not going to help that. Now, but what I'm going to want from Miami a draft pick from Miami, what's it going to be, 20th pick? I don't care about that. I don't care about the 20th pick that Miami can give me. I would want something valuable. So, yes, a trade package of, like, a Tyler Hero. Maybe, and then you, if you include Duncan Robinson, it would be a little too much money, but why not? Make the salaries work. You can go Dame for Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, probably three draft picks if you can get them. I'm not too sure how much picks Miami actually has, but you can get all those ones. Um, but I still think it's worth it. If I'm trading Dame, who's a superstar, I don't think Tyler Hero is what I want. Like, and I don't think there's anyone on that squad that I would want. Prime, I just, just no one. Of course, you know, let's talk about the other trade potential trades. Because I don't think the Miami one is, it's not happening. It's just not happening. There's not enough people. There's no one. There's no star. No future all star. There's just nothing. There's no uh like Mikel Bridges. You some people did believe if Mikel Bridges has his own team, he could be an all star. He's a great defender. Every team wants him. And also what you do with getting a Mikel Bridges, you knew you can flip him. Brooklyn knows that they can go in the offseason and still flip Mikel Bridges for like three draft picks. They know it. That's good. I don't believe Tyler Hero is going to give you three draft picks. He'll probably give you one, but 
that's it. Like you want something more for that person. And that's why I don't think Miami Heat's a, a good option at all. People are talking about Boston. Now he does he said Dame said, I don't want to go to Boston. Okay, he doesn't want to go to Boston. Okay, so we but if Boston was interested, and then Dame said, you know what? Pair me up with a Jason Tatum, I'll think about it. You, of course, go Jalen Brown and, and, and Dame. Now, if I'm just trading, you know, Jalen Brown and I'm getting Dame Lillard, I don't want to give you too much stuff, right? And I, mind you, I probably should. i probably give you Jalen Brown. And honestly, a draft pick. I love Dame. I love Dame. He, that's, he's been to a Western Conference Finals. We know Dame time is real. Uh, top 10 player in the league. We can say all that about him. For sure, for sure, for sure. But let's be honest here. Okay, guys? Let's just cut the bullshit. He hasn't made it to a Finals. We don't believe... Uh, because he's had a squad, he's had some good players on him that he can lead a team to the finals. So then I'm not going to trade my whole backyard for him. I'll trade you my second best player, which is Jalen Brown, and we keep it moving. Then you put you pair Jason Tatum and, and Dame Lillard. And that's a, a duo. That is a duo that can score. Like, and you put a lot of wings around there. A uh, good defender, and like you, you still have Marcus Smart, if, but you probably have to trade a Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown for Dame, not only for contracts, just because I think you got to you got to pair Dame with someone else. I don't think you pair Dame with Marcus Smart, even though Marcus Smart came from college playing the two, so but he kind of converted to the one. It is what it is, but that's a, a team that you can think about. People are talking about Philadelphia as a uh, a landing spot once again. I've heard people bring up Tobias Harris. Or Shake Milton. What? Or uh, D'Antoni uh, Melton. No. If you're calling me about Dame Lillard, hello. Oh, you want Dame? Okay, cool. I'll trade you Dame. Tyrese Maxey is coming here. You want a young player who you believe can be a star. Shout out to Tyler Hero in Miami. I don't believe Tyler Hero is going to – he can make an all-star because I'm not saying it's – Easy to make an all star. I just don't believe he, he's that. I, I don't believe he's not going to take him over the hump. Tyler Hero is, is not going to be a number two on a, on a winning championship team. I just don't see it. Uh, he's probably a number three. So why would I know? But Tyrese Maxey could probably be a number two. That's what you're thinking. Now, you can argue Ty, Tyrese Maxey and, and Tyler Hero can probably be the same type of player. And if they are the same type of player in your mind, get Tyrese Maxey. That doesn't make sense. You get the same, if they're the same players to you, Get that guy. Why are you going to go for Tobias Harris? Why would you do that? You're just setting yourself back. And once again, draft picks. What draft picks does Philadelphia have that I'm going to go like, this is amazing. And mind you, when they're getting a Dame Lillard, you have to ex expect that you're not going to get a top draft pick because this team is going to be good. But you're kind of thinking maybe in 2029, Philadelphia may not be that good. And I can look out in getting a draft pick the same way the Boston Celtics did with the Brooklyn Nets. You're kind of thinking in the future. And the same way the Brooklyn Nets are thinking about the Phoenix Suns. You're like, hey, this could be something for me. Now, a team that I'm going to talk about again in regards to Chris Paul, but a team that, hey, ring, ring. Oh, hey, Lakers. I didn't know you were going to call me. Cool. Okay. Oh, you what, 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 what I want from it? Portland may not want this guy, but if I'm the Lakers... Yeah, AD is available. Anthony Davis is available for a Damian Lillard trade. Because if you get Dame and LeBron and you put a bunch of wing defenders, that's a championship winning team. Because one thing LeBron's not going to have to do is handle the ball too much. And he's not going to have to carry the offense. You can give Dame the offense and just have quality guys. Because LeBron is still one of the smartest, if not the smartest guy in the NBA right now. And if you just pair him with a Dame, I think good things could happen. Now, if you get a Dame, you know other people are going to want to join the Lakers. They're going to want to call. Now, other than that, there's not much that the they have. The Lakers have no draft picks. They have one draft pick, which, once again, could be really great in 2029. Other than that, like, there's not much that you're going to want. There's really not. You have to trade a lot uh, for that, and I don't see that's going to happen. Um, there's there's a few other teams that have been floated around for Dane. The Raptors. Of course, I want to bring up the Raptors. Now, will I trade Pascal for him? No. You tell me, I got to trade OG. I love you, OG, but I'm going to be packing his bags. Because you pair Dame with a Pascal and a Scotty. Oh, I believe in this team. Oh, I believe they can do something. 
that's that's my main thought right now. About, okay, if I can put the paradigm with a guy in Pascal's mind, I would go. Now, let's flip it real quick. I'm going to kind of go for the Raptors side because I'm a Raptors fan. If you call me and you tell me you want OG, I want, and you're like, oh, I'll trade OG for that third overall pick. Okay, first of all, I'm doing it. Like, if I can get School Henderson or even Brandon Miller, I'm going to try. Like, why not? But then you got to trade a Pascal because they're just going to go too young, whatever. But you're saying you want OG for the number three pick? I'm saying yes. A number three and Anthony Simons? I think I'm definitely saying yes. And I love OG. Uh, but Raptor fans have to realize as much as you don't want to trade a guy like OG, one of the top defensive players in the league, you know, you look what Aaron Gordon is doing. Aaron Gordon is a great defensive player. But, like, I feel the Raptors – you know, have been trying to find this type of player in so long. So to trade him would be kind of stupid. But I also think trading him is okay because I do think you can find pieces that can fill that role. And you have a, if you want to keep a precious Achua, who is also a, probably the second best defensive player on the team. So I just think there's makings of a next OG down the pipeline. That's all I'm saying. But I'm saying you want to switch up and let you know Dame get an OG as a guy and probably get the resign Gary uh Jeremy Grant or whatever. Why not? That's good for that side. But th there's so much, you know, places that Dame Lillard can honestly go to. There's only so much. So it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun offseason for Dame. And you know, he's talked about it more now. You know, before he said he was loyal, you know, 10 toes down, all that stuff. He was all for it. So now to hear him kind of be more, more, uh, what's the word, more willing to be traded, it makes you want to call, right? I know the New York Knicks are thinking about it, and that's not a bad place. They actually have some draft picks. Now, who you trade for, that's the question, because you have Jalen Brutson. Uh, you may have to trade him for RJ Barrett and probably Julius Randle. Like, you have to trade multiple, but I wouldn't be – it wouldn't be a crazy thought if New York was a, a team, but there's multiple teams. There's so much teams that can get uh, th this guy. Now, once again, don't be surprised if they flip the switch on everybody and go call Brooklyn and be like, okay, we have draft picks too. Here is our number three pick. Give us Mikel Bridges and Nick Claxton. Cause we want, we need more. We need, give us both. Here's number three overall pick. Brooklyn starts fresh. They have their point out of the future. Why not? Why wouldn't they think of it? But I can I can talk Dame probably I, the way I'm talking about Dame I should probably do a whole podcast about Dame and where he can go. Let me move on to Chris Paul because Chris Haynes reported that he's getting waived by Phoenix Suns. Woj and Shams report that oh we don't know what's gonna happen. He may get waived. He may get waived and resign. There's so much stories about this that we don't know what's actually happening. Okay, we don't know what's actually happening. Chris Paul is getting waived. No sugar code it. Chris Paul is getting waived. Now, when he gets waived, the question is, where should he go? I just talked to you about a team in Boston. Maybe you should go to Boston. They need uh, someone. He can go, heck, he can go to a team like, uh, he needs to go to a team that, like, and, and I made a podcast about the Boston Celtics. Chris Paul would actually be the perfect fit. Like, I think that the Boston Celtics are the perfect fit for uh, a Chris Paul. Now, since he gets hurt, I'm going to say something that a lot of people may disagree with, and I'm okay with that. Chris Paul should come off the bench. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. He's a good player. One of the smartest players in the league. I get that. But with his injury history and what you need of him, let him come off the bench. We have Kyle Lowry coming off the bench in Miami, and of course, Gabe Vincent has played like a starter, so we understand that. But Kyle Lowry has, like I said, finished games. And all that you need in Boston is someone who's going to calm that team down, make them take smarter shots, and then you're good. I guess that's like literally the literal hump that they need to take. Don't You don't trade Jalen Brown. We didn't trade Jason Taylor. You don't do nothing. Get Chris Paul on the squad. Let him come off your bench. Play still 25, 30 minutes a game. And I think sky's the limit for the Boston Celtics. Then you have the Milwaukee Bucks. Same thing. There's Drew Holiday there. Because it's a Drew Holiday, you can argue that you can start a Chris Paul. Because you can go uh, Chris Paul at the one, Drew at the two, Middleton at the three. 
Giannis at the four, Burke at the five. That's if he resigns. So he's still got a pretty good squad because you're putting Drew at the two. He can Drew can guard anybody. So and Chris Paul is there, and he have multiple ball handlers. Chris Paul can shoot three. Chris Paul, you're not gonna have, ask him to do too much on that squad. So that's actually could be another perfect match. I think if Chris Paul's thinking about titles, Milwaukee and Boston are, are his two best ideas. Like I said, there's Lakers too. Call up his best friend LeBron. Hey, Bron, what do you think? I can help out. I can play 25 minutes a game. I, I won't play every game, probably play like 50 games, but I'll be ready for the playoffs, and that's what matters the most. Why not? Why not? Of course, that team will be mad old, so you got to bring some young talent in Austin Reeves. Um, what do you do with D'Lo? Do you bring Kyrie if Kyrie wants to come, which is my next topic? What about all that? But once again, I just think Chris Paul should come off the bench. That is the best version of Chris Paul right now in his career. And he said he, he basically can play much longer or whatever. But that's what I see. Now, do I see him wanting to stay in uh, Phoenix? Why stay there? I don't think that team's going to do much. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't believe so. I don't believe in the team at all. I don't want to go more onto that. I don't believe in the team. Let's go. And Chris Paul, and then they even say, what, Philadelphia. If James Harden decides to leave, which he's, he's leaving. He's going to Houston. Chris Paul can go there. Now, do I think he can help in Embiid? Yes. I think players like Chris Paul, Mike Conley, Kyle Lowry, love helping their big men. And I think that can happen as well. So I, it's, it's all those teams, I, I just believe that he can help. He can help a Zion and, um, and a Brandon Ingram in, for, for the Pelicans. He may have to start there, but it's some. So it's, there's, there's options, you know? Chris Paul has options. That's why you... Let them waive you. You get your $15 million. You sign for a vet minimum or a mid-level exception. You sign a two-year, you know, $20, $30 million contract, and you're fine. Because I don't know how much longer he can really go. But if he's off the bench, I think that's, like, the best version of him. Arguably, and I'm just going to argue, I'm not, I've never been the big, biggest Chris Paul fan, but he can always come to Toronto, come off the bench for, for, for Van Vliet. Why not? I think the Raptors would love to have – a new kind of Kyle Lowry, a new leadership. Like I made a video in the past, the Raptors need a leader. And I think Chris Paul can be all that. Now talking about a guy I just spoke about in Kyrie Irving. Quite simple. I think he's leaving Dallas. He has multiple options. His best option is to leave Dallas. People are talking about him or even Harden. Let's talk about both of them. Him or Harden going to, uh, to Phoenix. People liked to surround themselves around misery. If you want to do it, continue that. Continue being miserable. Continue hating yourselves because do that. Devin Booker is on the next plane out to whatever city he's he's gone to. He'll probably go to New York or something. But it's just, it's not the right place for him to want to go to. Uh, but Kyrie, I think he's probably going to go to LA. You know, he already talked to Braun about it. So I would expect that. I don't want to talk too much about the whole Kyrie story because there's so much to dive into in regards to Kyrie, but I really do believe that he's someone who's going to go there. Um, my, I think my last topic that I want to talk about is Carlton Towns. There was a report that came out that Carlton Towns is leaving or he's going to get traded within the next few weeks. I won't be shocked. Once again, if you're a team like, you know, Portland, See what you can get. If you have the third overall pick, maybe you put Carlton Towns in Portland. Now, defensively, horrible to have Dame and Carlton Towns. Offensively, that team could be nice. That team could be real nice if you if you had that. It'd be really nice. So maybe you could do something like that. But but I'm also thinking if I'm them, then you could put Scoot with a with an aunt Edwards, who I believe should be the face of the league soon. That is a future. The Minnesota Timberwolves will have a future having that pick. And, 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 uh, and, and But what you would do if you're Portland, okay, we're, we're getting Carlton Towns, but can we get a McDaniels too? I know you guys not want to trade him before, but we're giving you a third overall pick. Give us an Ant and McDaniels, a good defender. Then, you know, they at least they have him. You can see if you can, you know, ask Grant to sign a different deal. Uh, but if you trade Simmons, you'll have some cap space. Get him. So then you can put like a you know, you have a Dame, a uh, uh, Grant, a uh, McDaniel's, another being you know, power forward. You can maybe keep your shade and sharp and everything. 
man, you in your county town. So wing wise, you're you're long, you're very long, and you have a big in the county towns. But I do think county towns needs to get traded. I think he's he has the most value on the team. I do believe that that Minnesota Timberwolves team um, is a team that needs to move on from him and needs to now give it to. Ant Edwards. The crazy thing is Ant Edwards would benefit from having Carlton Towns, but if Carlton Towns knew that he was the second option, like if he, you know, took a like a hard like, mirror and said, hey, this is where my career is. As much as I want to be a number one guy, I'm not. I'm not a number one guy. I'm a number two guy. And I'm a good number two. And maybe that's him. Which almost like one day I'll talk about like a Anthony Davis and his real number one, number two, number three status. I think it may shock people. I don't think he's number one. And I potentially don't think he's number two. Maybe the best version of Anthony Davis is number three. But I mean like a hard-nosed number three, like a Chris Bosh-ish, uh, probably with a little bit more points. But Carlton Towns is number two. He's not number one. So the best version of the Minnesota Timberwolves, the next step for them, you give the reins to Ant Edwards and see what can happen. That's like just my thought. But Carlton Towns is probably going to get traded. I, I haven't really deep dive to really think where he can go. I don't know where he can go specifically. Uh, I know people can talk about New York because that's he has ties in New York. He's from New York, so he may want to go there. Once again, if you're a team like Brooklyn, trade a Mikel for Carlton Towns. Why not? Because at least if you're Brooklyn, you start with Carlton Towns and you build from there. Because Brooklyn can't can't afford to lose. They don't have their picks. So they can't afford to lose. Uh, yeah, you get Phoenix's pick, but other than that, you don't have your own. So you can't really tank. You got to be good or be middle of the pack. So your draft pick isn't that crazy. Even though the next year's draft is told, isn't going to be that amazing. But we're on draft time. Watch what everyone says. Those hits like a top 20, top 10 draft of all time. Say something like that. But yeah, with Carlton Towns, you know, pair him with Trey Young, maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think he should be on a team that there's a lot of def- – Defensive players, uh, once again, a really good point guard because he needs a he the type of guy who needs a, 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 a solid point guard. But that's really it with the, with Carlton Towns. I'm not really sure, but as long as he knows he's a number two, wherever team he goes to, then I think the team will be much better. Well, that's it for my weekly NBA podcast. Uh, I was gone for a second, but now I'm back. Um, tell me what you think about this model. I'm gonna change the camera. I know that. I'm going to change the camera. That looks kind of weird. The guys behind me are about to win the title in Jokic and Murray. Uh, tell me what you guys think. Like and subscribe. Where do you think game will go? Chris Paul, that whole situation. Kyrie Irving. You know, the NBA draft is coming. Victor Victor's about to, Victor just had his finals. I'm not sure if he won or not, but Victor has his finals. You know, Raptors have a new coach. I'm going to do a Raptors podcast just after this. Uh, stay tuned. I have, uh, I'm, I'm messaging some guests to do some, you know, podcast again, because I love doing all that. Love talking to, you know, especially the Raptors. I, I should branch off to see some other guys as well. But I, I'm very excited for the future uh, of the podcast as well. Like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys again. Peace.